I don't know that there was ever a decision that I made to get into farming. Uh, it was uh, more of a uh, out of necessity, I believe, at the time. We had uh, a lot of kids, grandkids, and needed uh, food. One thing led to another, and we began to produce food for ourselves that other people wanted. When we first started out here, we began raising laying hens. We'd buy day-old peeps, uh, raise them out till about six months when they were laying eggs, and we began selling those. We had people coming in from all over the area buying the, the laying hens, and from that they said, well, can you do meat birds? And we said, sure, why not? And we just kind of grew from there. We're primarily grass-fed meats and eggs, which means we have uh, cattle, uh, grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, goat. We have uh, meat chickens, pork, Thanksgiving turkeys. We raise fresh Thanksgiving turkeys. Uh, we have uh, ducks, geese, mostly for eggs, ducks for meat and eggs. We did raise vegetables, but we uh, stopped doing that. It was just too much. We do a lot of chicken eggs, which are very popular. I'm Chef Garrett, I'm a certified executive chef and I have a little show called A Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett. I'm out here at uh, Wisner Farms today to talk a little bit about the products that he raises, the type of products that I use as a chef and the type of industry that has evolved around this exact same thing here. In the last few years people have become very, very conscious of what they're eating, where it comes from, what is the source of that food because we began to get a little bit worried that we had strayed off the path of eating good, nutritious, healthy food. So a few years ago, we started what was called the organic movement. I hate that name because it's got a, a certain, a sort of a pompous effect to it and a, and a kind of a connotation of, of being somewhat exclusive. The fact of the matter is, what we need in our diet and in our food chain is natural, sustainable, properly produced, healthy food. Now, I've used these products, and I have found them to be infinitely, infinitely better than that which you can buy from your normal purveyor. Why? Because again, we go back to it. This product, it's, it's local, it's natural, it's not force-fed, it's not contained, it's not pumped, it's not full of growth hormone. And a lot of what you have in your supermarket shelves is exactly that. When we started out, uh, our objective was to be as, as natural as possible with all our foods and to raise them as close to uh, nature as, as we could, or as nature's blueprint, which of course with animals is putting grass, is grass feeding them, free ranging grass feeding. So with our chickens, we initially uh, completely free range them in an area that was fenced. We found that that limited our ability to move them around, to control them. So we, uh, we went to what I call our uh, egg RV, uh, which is a mobile trailer that we move around the property about every week or so, so that they're foraging grass and uh, bugs at the same time they're fertilizing our pastures. Laying hens eggs, for instance, are a, uh, very much a challenge because of feed cost. Uh, we pay retail for feed, unlike the big producers who basically can buy it below the cost of production which means that our prices have to be considerably higher and even then we barely eke out uh, a profit on them. Uh, eggs are one of the examples that we're constantly reassessing and we stay with them because our customers really love them and, they're, and we love them uh, and they're, they're so different from anything you can buy in the store that uh, we continue with them as a, if nothing else a lost leader. So, uh, you know, deciding what to do and, and what you can do uh, reasonably and profitably and with the skills and labor and all the things you have is, is really a key to this. If you start with a really great product, what you want to do is get it as natural to the plate as you got it from your purveyor. In order to do that, you have to start with a great product. Great product, it's got to be natural, preferably local and definitely, definitely chemical free. For me as a chef, let me tell you, there's simply no comparison. You have to get good natural product if you want to create great dishes. It really is that simple. And that is why the whole farm to fork concept has caught on so well. And that's why places like this, here at Wisner Farm, this is why these places are doing so well. And they should. 
Does it cost more? Of course it costs more. It's not mass produced. It's like anything else in life. If you want something really good, maybe you got to pay a little bit for it. The deal is this, is it worth it? As a chef, absolutely. We have a, uh, a commercial store, a, a store here in the arena, which uh, was actually a, an apartment that was built by a previous owner uh, to keep our uh, children from moving back in on us. Uh, we turned it into a store and a commercial kitchen. Uh, my wife is a uh, baker and bakes uh, bread rolls. We also do jams, jellies, uh, apple butters, um, uh, pump pumpkin butter, uh, various uh, kinds of prepared foods um, that we sell alongside our meats and eggs uh, as well. What I see uh, as, as the future for this is more and more people are waking up to the concerns of what is in their food, particularly in their meats. All the additives that are going into uh, meats these days is, is very troublesome and, and doesn't seem to be uh, something that's getting less so. It seems like it may be getting, becoming more so even. Keeping up with the demand for our products is, is our biggest challenge. Just more of what we're doing, I believe, is the future without compromising the quality and integrity of the product, which is very, would be very easy to do, but it would not serve anyone.